juice, the freestyle make you seasick. We're recording this for MV, the remix, dot com. I got flows if you got some. That cat's hot. Nobody else is hot tongue. Like J.U., I'm calling Vancouver. No matter who's smooth against me, your man's smoother. His name is Hugo. My name is Hugo. That's juice in Spanish. I am everywhere that you go. The best in the industry. I got a nice fountain. So cold, the only water I drink is Ice Mountain. J.U., freestyling to what I'm into doing. On the mic, I'm done. Fuck the interviewing. <laughs> and I'm out. www.mv Remix Dot, 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 dot. How did the Monica okay. How did the Monica Juice originally arise? Um. Well, I was uh I was rapping in uh in L.A. You know, I grew up in L.A. I was born in Chicago. I grew up in L.A. And there were some cats from New York, and they uh they heard me rhyme, and they were like, "Man, my name at the time, my, my real name is Terry. Mm-hmm. So at the time, my real name was Fresh T. I thought I was so hot, and I was like, "Yo, my name is Fresh T." And they were like, "Yo, you got big respect, dude. The way you rhyme." Man, you you gonna have all the juice. You gonna have all of the respect. Yo, your your name should be Juice, man, because that's how you rhyme. You rhyme like you want respect. And these two New York cats, these, and they were they were younger than me too. They were like shorties. I was just hanging out with them. I was like three years older than them, and they basically gave me the name, and that that's it stuck ever since then. Cool. Um, from being sort of taken from to LA and Chicago and back and forth and such, what made you decide that you wanted to pursue rap as a career? Uh, well, I didn't know that I was doing it. I just did it because I, I like to do it. I didn't, you know, I didn't really try to put out records. I, I didn't really do any of that stuff. I just, I just wanted to rap. And the only way I knew at the time, you know, how to rap was just to like get in contest and show that I was better than people. That was, that was it. And that, that predicated, that everything was predicated on me just doing that. And then the records just started because people were like, Yo, you should spit those battle raps, you know, or those raps you do over vinyl. And so that's how it started. It, it was inadvertent. I don't think it was on purpose. Okay. Who influenced um, or inspired you to begin battling? Uh, th- th- there were two people. Um, there was there was LL, who, in my opinion, is the greatest on the major label scale. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was Big Daddy Kane, who, even though I had never heard of him being in any battles, it seemed to me that if somebody was standing in front of him, he could eat him up. So they were they were the original inspirations, and then LL obviously was a songwriter. So that you know, I took that that side of it too. Like, well, this dude kicks those kind of raps, but he also kicks stories. So I would say those two were the main influences. Definitely nice. Um, who would you say would be the best person that you have battled? Uh, it's funny. The, the best person that I've ever battled is an unknown guy. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he was from LA and, uh, his name was David Drummond. Uh, he used to be cool with, um, Newmark, uh, and Newmark is the DJ for Jurassic Five. Uh-huh. So he was his protege and their, their crew used to battle our crew all the time. They had a crew called Bum Rush and we had a crew called CSS, Constantly Serving Suckers. Uh-huh. And we would always battle, and he was the best dude ever. And I felt like if I could find, he used to just just stalk me, just threaten me everywhere I went. He would just be, he was like a bully, and he was so he was so good. And every time I would, every time I would be anywhere, like my high school graduation, he was there. Uh, prom night, he was there. He just wouldn't leave me alone. And I felt if I could beat David Drummond, that I could beat almost anyone because he was great. So he's the best person ever that I've ever battled. He was perfect with metaphors, perfect with his style. Um, and he, he set me up for the future days of battling. I just didn't know it yet. Do you know if he still does any material or when it the last I, the last I heard from from this cat, he was doing gospel rap. Okay. Um, <laughs> he was doing religious rap. Um, he went through a bunch of problems personally, and I guess he got into that. I haven't heard anything from him since, but I know that you know if 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 some of the great supposed greats of today who were battling like. The great MCs of today were battling him. It would have been a difficult situation. He was he was good with it, and he was he was such a ridiculous freestyler. You just you just couldn't beat him. I only beat him once. I beat him the very the very well twice. The second and last time I battled him. So I don't ever want to see him again. I hope he's not rapping right now. So what about CSS? Can you tell me a bit about sort of who was in the group and what happened to it? 
Well, CSS was a group I started. Um, we were a battle crew, uh, a bunch of cats that uh, that were we were from the valley, and uh, it was it was me. It was this cat DJ Domino, um, who ended up battling that dude Newmark at one of our battles, and Newmark ate him up. Um, this was obviously before the Jurassic Five days. There was a uh, another MC named MC Trance. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was another MC named Mardi, and we were like the crew. We were CSS, and we had DJ Breakdown and DJ Domino as our DJs, and we would throw house parties in the valley. We were like, we would throw house parties where everybody would show up, like the alcoholics and just exhibit. Everybody would come to our parties, and we would always end up battling whoever. Um, at the time, there was another DJ who was cool with this group called the Bolo Unit. They ended up being the alcoholics. And we were about to merge with that group. We were about to merge with this dude named Suave D. He died uh, in a drunk driving accident. And that's some of the reason for the name The Alcoholics. Because like, he was definitely on that tip. He was. He got a little production deal. He was going to fuse his guys, which were him, Taz, j Roll, and another producer with CSS. And we were all going to become one crew. But when he passed away, it didn't happen. Yeah. So CSS basically ended up um, throwing parties. We ended up changing our name a couple times and then we started adding members and we became more of a gang than than a crew and so now the the cats that originally started css have are are on some other shit like it's a, it's a different level it's more street now it's not really about rap so the crew is still in existence it has another name um but it ain't about rap it's just about <laughs> it's about the street yeah do you that, still... was, that was the demise of CSS. Once we didn't merge, I moved to Chicago, and I really couldn't further it out here. Yeah. Do you still maintain much contact with the likes of the Alcoholics and Charlie Tuna, Newmark, and such? Uh, I mean, I see those cats on occasion. I mean, I, they, uh, I'm doing a DVD, and uh, pretty pretty soon about you know freestyling, and Charlie Tuna gave me some good words, and um, I'm definitely trying to get some good words from like the Alcoholics. Uh, my producer is messing with those cats. I guess he's going to do some tracks for the Alcoholics and Taz new album. Yeah, I, I speak to them there in Vegas. They're doing good. Um, you know, but other than that, I think that we're going to, we all do a different type of stuff. Like my, my album is about to come out and it's really not an album like the old school stuff I used to do. Mm-hmm. What can you, you tell know? me about your album? Um, it is a cross between Kanye's College Dropout and 50 Cent's album because it, it's not it's not it's not so street to where I, I have bullet holes all on the cover and all in my face but it's definitely not to the point where I like to have a teddy bear on the cover mm-hmm. like it's somewhere in between those two it's not um, so it, it's, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good project it's a uh, it's almost done and uh, we're looking at May 31st next year for the release date Nice. And that's coming out through your own label? Yeah, the label is called The Conglomerate. Oh. And uh, that's my label. I have a, uh, me, uh, we have a, another cat who's the owner in the label who produces. His name is DJ Immaculate uh, with an E, Immaculate. Mm-hmm. Um, he's ridiculous. He's uh, the label lead producer. And we got production from some of the local cats out here, like Spike and Jamal. And we're going to work with a few cats, uh, Bugs and SV, just local cats. Um, we're not really trying to go outside of our crew to get production unless it's a ridiculous track and we can afford it. So uh, I think it's going to be all right, man. Uh, it's, it's dope. I'm doing a mixtape first and then I'm going to do the album after that. Nice. Looking forward to it. Um, how did the New Groove deal basically come about? And as a result of that, have you been able to obtain any of the monies that have been owed to you? Or has that just fallen through? Uh, well, well, the New Groove deal came about through a, a guy named Lucas Zimmer. Lucas worked at New Groove, and um, he was instrumental in getting a lot of talent into New Groove. He brought a lot of groups to them, um, and he brought me. And they wanted to do uh, Sincerely, the single that I did, and we did it. And then they wanted to do uh, a mixtape, which was 100% Juice, uh-huh. and we did it, signed the contract. And uh, I, uh, I had been hearing that we were doing quite well because every retail outlet I was you know, at in different cities and stuff, I would see it. Um, but I never received any money from it because New Group folded. And there were a bunch of other groups that didn't. 
Um, we tried to pursue it because New Groove was part of TRC, even though it didn't look like it. They were in the same building and shared offices. So we tried to pursue it with TRC, but TRC really wasn't giving out any information. And then we went through, we tried to find out from Caroline what they had moved of it. And they wouldn't tell us. They would, they were like, we can't disclose that. You have to ask your label, but the label isn't in existence. So, you know, I just, I wrote it off as a promotional tool and that was the reason I started my own label. I was like, well, if I want to make music, I might as well make some of the money off it. I haven't really made any money off my music to date, and that's okay. And with your own label, are you seeking any sort of major distribution, or are you keeping it independent? Or Well, it, it, it depends. Uh, the, 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 plan is, the business plan is being written up for the label to, be, to, uh, to have private funding. Mm -hmm. We've been lucky enough to get some private guys who are fairly heavy who kind of know my history and, and believe that we can we can make a dent in the major label market, especially because they see what Eminem did. And even if I do a tenth of what he did, then I'll be successful. So that's the, the plan uh, to, to move the records independently. Obviously, major distribution is always an option. If, if we get the kind of deal that like a No Limit had where we're getting 80% and ownership and and, you know, we get to use their marketing department and that's recoupable, then major label distribution would be first on our list. But if they're not listening, then uh, we're going to have to go through alternative distribution channels to, to do it. And I think, I think based on the album that we have, we can do it. Yeah, definitely. I'm confident. So you briefly touched on Eminem. What are your thoughts on the, well, what are your thoughts these days on things like Just Lose It and the controversy surrounding that? Oh, well, I think that, uh, I think that Eminem is uh, is uh, someone who is going to do what he wants to do, regardless of what you think about it. I think that the timing of the song might be bad for Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. but it's a hilarious song, and it's even more hilarious visually. So, uh, you know, is it Eminem's fault that Michael Jackson's in trouble? Nah. Uh, is it bad for Mike? For sure. Do I stand behind Eminem? Of course. Do I think he's a racist? No. Um, I think that the, the, the way you know that he's not is because there are dozens and dozens of minorities that are millionaires from messing with Eminem. And if he didn't want it that way, it didn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that him uh, not liking any particular group of people is necessarily a true statement. I think we all say stuff in the privacy of our own homes that we don't expect to be taped. And in his instance, some of the things that he said just happened to be taped when he was kind of young and, uh, and it's coming back to bite him. So I think it's going to have an effect on his celebrity. It could, I doubt it. I think it, I think that the powers that be still support him. And I mean, I consider him a friend of mine. I'm as cool with him as I could be with somebody who has a hundred million dollars. Uh, I mean, we can't really kick it in the same places every day. I'm not rich like that. But, I mean, I'm sure that if, if I was in the industry with a successful album, I'd probably be hanging around him a lot. So, mm -hmm. as, a, as a fellow artist and a future, and a future rap star, I, I got his back. I know a lot of people who feel that way. Cool, cool. What's your creative process when you write? And are you always clear and sober when you do so? Ah, uh, uh, well, I try to... Uh, I try to touch on stuff that, that affects me. I try to do what comedians do. I try to figure, I try to say stuff that people are thinking but forget to say. Mm -hmm. That's like what Jay-Z does. I think Eminem does that. I think Twister does that. These cats have the ability to actually say what you were thinking and you'd be like, ah, oh, I should have said that. Big L used to do that. He would make stuff rhyme that was so ridiculous but you knew it rhymed, you just never put it together. So that's, kind of the goal from the rhyme side and then from the creative side um i just i just try to talk about stuff that that affects just regular people i don't really try to dig too deep i i think that uh a deep message can be lost sometimes if it's not delivered properly or you can deliver a deep message real simply and it could work mm -hmm. so i think my goal is just to appeal to the common consumer the underground is different we kind of got to touch below the surface but when you're selling records uh, you have to get those people in and then show them who you are later, like Outkast did. Yeah, it's definitely. so different from the first album. Uh, and the other question you had was, am I clear and sober? 
I generally write sober. Um, I've had very few instances where I was intoxicated or high. I don't really know how it feels to write in those zones. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the studio, you know, when you're getting drunk, you write, but that's not typical for me. Generally, I, uh, I dig deep into the pad and I'm thoroughly aware of everything that I say when I say it. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really had any instance. Maybe if I start falling off lyrically, I'll get high all the time or something. I don't know. <laughs> now have fun with this one. I love Fight Club. If you could fight any celebrity, who would you fight? If I could fight any celebrity, who would I fight? Oh, celebrity Fight Club. And I've had everything have, from hey, Schwarzenegger have, to Coleman to George Bush. I've even had Lawrence I'm gonna Fishburne. Ha I'm going to have to say that I would... Uh, that I would fight Star Jones from The View. Because, because that that would be a real difficult one for me to win. And I think that if if I won that fight with Star Jones, I think I would have industry-wide respect because no one would expect <laughs> for me to come on top. She's a little much to handle. I think, I think I'd think fight Star Jones. I'm calling Star Jones out to a fight. Nice. Right here on MV. I'm calling him out right now. Perfect. <laughs> so if Star Jones or her husband... Nah, because he's, he's my size. I need somebody bigger. Star Jones or Kelly Price, if they want to fight, I'm down. Anytime in Chicago, we can rent out the UIC Pavilion, move the furniture out the way, and we can do this. And that's a quote from Juice. Perfect. Um, <laughs> but didn't Kelly Price lose some weight? I thought she was a little smaller now. She is, but it's still going to be tough. Like, I'll probably have to fly you out here to make that happen if we're going to beat her up. There's nothing wrong with jumping a celebrity. Perfect. What are your vices? Hold on, just a second. Okay. The cell phone rings and it's someone who doesn't matter, so he presses silent. She needs to write that stuff down. What are my vices? Is that what you said? Yep. What do you mean? Um, um, I mean, aside from, you know, work and music and all that other stuff, what do you do to relax? What are the things which you do to give yourself pleasure? What do I do? Uh, I'm learning how to relax. I'm not real good at it yet. Every time I try to relax, I get up. Mm -hmm. um, what do I do? This is going to sound crazy, but I study, I study philosophies of famous business people a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I study like, like, like Bill Gates and Steve Forbes and, and Richard Branson. I study their philosophies because I'm intrigued with I'm intrigued with what they've achieved, and I'm intrigued with the philosophies behind it. A lot of corporate philosophies, like the president of maybe Pepsi or United Airlines, I study a lot of that stuff. Um, and that really relaxes me, because that's sort of where I'm trying to get my company. Mm -hmm. I think that, that when I look at true moguls, I don't look at a lot of music industry people, uh, besides Clive Davis and obviously Clive Calder, who owns Zamba. There's not a lot of true moguls. Like, $400 million is a lot of money, but... You know, Bill Gates has a boat that costs that. So it's relative to how much you have. So I look at that. I look at the Larry Flint, the Hefners, the billionaires. I look at those cats because there's such a select group of them. I just think it's just intriguing for how that happened. And I just try to study that and sort of mesh that into my ideology. And uh, if I'm not doing that, I'm trying to go to Atlantic City or Vegas. Cool. These days, which artists make you feel glad that a genre like rap exists? Who are you feeling at the moment? Uh, as rap artists? Yeah. Man. <sighs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm happy that, that Nas is still at a, is at a high level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to maintain that sort of career without smash radio hits for that long. It's over a decade, and he's still in the game, and he's still, he's still uh, intricate with his flows. He's, he's still a renaissance guy. I like him. Uh, Brother Ali. Brother Ali makes me feel like like independent rap should be at a higher level. Yeah. Brother Ali is is is, uh, is, is one of my favorites. I, I listen to his album a lot. Uh, Jay, Jay Z retiring it, it, it bothers me a bit, but I don't see it being a permanent thing. I really think that when I drop a major label album, he's going to drop one because he'll have a reason to. I believe it. Well, plus uh, there's a lot to do the, with um. I mean, that's, the only, that's the only other Jay that I that I see that I you know, uh, Jadakiss. He's a cat that uh, 
that is cracking the surface, and I'm happy to see it because he's got lyrics. Uh, he don't have a bunch of different flow patterns. He got like a couple, but he got a, he got lyrics and, and to the up, utmost degree, and it's good to see him being rewarded with with sales. It's good to see half a million to a million people purchasing his record. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's it's really not too many cats that I'm feeling on a uh, on a continual basis. I like Jewel Santana a lot. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't think I was that good when I was that young. If he's really that young, yeah, you know, if he's really that young, he's pretty advanced. Other than that, I can't really think of too many cats. See, not a lot of girl. Yeah, I'm not feeling a lot of girl. See, with regards to Jay Z, um, his whole retirement thing, I don't really buy into because he's been doing so many guest appearances and stuff. Like he's on the new <laughs> Slim Thug album, which is going to come out in a couple months. And he's going here, there, and everywhere. And I heard he's going to be um, the Def Jam president soon. He's in negotiations for that too. So Yeah, he's in negotiations for a lot of things. I, I honestly think from a business standpoint, his position was, in order for me to further myself, I'm going to have to re- re- resign from this venture that I helped create in order to foray into other stuff. I don't buy it for a half sec. When I hear him rap, I still think he has a few things he wants to say. But I think that... I think that there'll there'll be certain uh, there'll be certain factors that happen in the game, and and if there's a hot album to drop, he's gonna feel like like Apollo did on Rocky Three. He's gonna be like, I need to fight the Russian dude. I'm coming back into the ring, and I think that he'll be cool. But I think I just I just that's that's what I feel about his whole his whole predicament. I don't see it as a long term thing. Oh, and I'm feeling uh, to live quality too cool. a lot. Now, do you remember the first movie you saw? No. Uh, you know what? I think the first movie I saw, this doesn't count at home, because when you watch movies at home, you don't know what they are. Yeah. I think the first movie I saw with my mom was a black exploitation flick from the, the 70s called Superfly. Oh, yeah. I think that was the first movie I saw. And I remember being young, and this woman on the screen had, had the biggest ass I had ever seen in my life. And I knew when I grew up, I wanted to see an ass like that near me. I knew that. <laughs> At an early age, I knew when I grow up, I need something like that near me. That that movie let me know exactly what a real thick woman was for. So I do remember the first movie I ever went to see. Yes, I do. Nice. Have you seen um, the movie Badass? No, I have not. That's a really interesting film. Um, it's about Sweet Sweetback's Badass Revenge. Have you heard of that one? No. It was basically what coined off all of black exploitation, the independent film genre, all the things like that. Because um, it was done by a black director with no studio support, shown in two cinemas, and that's it. And um, this was 1970. And it managed to gross 15 million independently. You're kidding. First ever. No one's even heard of it, but apparently it was huge way back when. And. Um, films like Sharpton and all that, apparently there was meant to be a white lead, but because of the mm-hmm. success of that, they made Sharpt black, and then everything ah. spiraled. But, wow. It was called Badass, huh? Well, the remake which um, Mario Van Peebles did recently is called Badass, and that's uh, through Sony Picture Classics. But the original has a long title, which is Sweet Sweetback's Badass Revenge. But I recommend you go and check out Badass, because um, that would just give you a lot of insight into independent cinema. It's really good. Cool. Thank you so much. No problem. So let's see. Aside from the album, do you have any collaborations, guest appearances, or group projects you're working on? Uh, not not a lot as of uh, as of late. I uh, I used to do a lot on the independent level, and I I thought that I was keeping current while while I was doing other things, but I realized that I might have been oversaturating a little bit. There was a there was a juice guest cut on every piece of vinyl you could find because I'm generally not the type to tell someone no. I think it's an honor for them to request me on a song, mm-hmm. even if they're not that great. But I'm realizing that you kind of got to be a little bit more choosy about the guest cuts you do. So I don't do as many. Uh, for that reason, it's dropped off to near nil. Uh, I have other artists on my label that I want to put out, but I think I, I have to be the springboard. So none of that stuff is even worth mentioning. Uh, it's just, it's all about juice right now with the album, the DVD and the second album. 
that's what the label is going to gear up for. And, and those are going to be the springboards for everything else. And if they work, then I'll be able to really reach back to where my roots are and put a lot of people in a, a good position. Like I, I'm going to flood the market with people like most and to live. And if they don't like it, then fine. Basically going to employ no limit strategy of putting out a bunch of releases, but they're all quality music. Not that his music wasn't quality for its audience, but quality music from where I came from, from my genre, uh, the, the underground hip hop genre. And if we can get that ready for the major label scale, then I think I will, I will have done something great and I will be the sacrificial lamb for the label. I'll be the underground cat that went commercial, but I think they'll say that, well, at least he helped out. Do you have any last words to your fans or potential fans that are going to be reading this? Um, yeah, I guess. I, you know, uh, a lot of you are going to get to know a lot about me from this, from this uh, project and from future projects. And, you know, the, the often unglamorous life of an underground MC isn't really a life that I've ever led. I've always been pretty well to do with with uh, with myself as an adult. I mean, as a kid when I was battling, I wasn't. But in, in my adult years, I lived pretty well. I'm sure there's a lot of major label rappers that don't live like I live and have what I have. So, you know, hopefully you guys learn a little more about me and you learn that I went to L.A. and, you know, I moved there. I lived there most of my life. Uh, you know, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a gang that I started. Um, we real, <laughs> but also I'm an MC. I'm just, I'm just a normal guy. I'm just, I have a bunch of sides to me and the battling side is the dominant side that everyone knows, but it doesn't encompass juice as an artist. And yes, I can really freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's what I want to tell them. 